What's up guys, Cliff with the Sunday Drive and today we're gonna to be installing a front lip on this F32 435. So welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are working on one of our employees BMWs behind me. It's a F32 435 and this com company Ninte reached out to us. So this was a free product to us. I always like to put that caveat out there that we did not pay for this item. Um, so they sent this to us for us to install and review. So we're gonna be showing you guys how to install it and what our impressions of the lip are. Now we actually install a ton of front lips at the shop. Um, working on BMW. So we're very familiar with how front lips should install. However, this is our first time installing this brand. Um, the one thing I will say about front lips is they do break a lot. I know for one of our customers, we have put three front lips on his and those have all been very expensive carbon fiber lips. Uh, the last one he went with was a plastic lip because he got frustrated with breaking all the carbon fiber ones. So the nice thing about a budget lip is you don't have to worry if you smash it up, it's cheap to replace. I believe this is sub $300, so it's definitely on the more budget side. Um, our employee wanted to go with a matte black finish. They do have other finishes available, and I think you can also get uh, carbon fiber from them as well. Um, but he wanted the matte black look to accent his black F32, so that's what he went with. Um, my initial impressions are the fitment when we threw it on the car seemed to be decent, so we'll see how it is when we go to screw it on. Um, it's pretty well made. It, it doesn't feel flimsy. Um, you can see if I hold the lip up, it doesn't flex at all. It's nice and sturdy, so uh, that's pretty nice. Um, the finish on it is not fantastic. There are a couple uh, small blemishes and scratches, um, but for a sub $300 lip, it's not bad. Um, I don't know if those occurred during shipment. This was in bubble wrap, but uh, maybe it should have a little more bubble wrap around it. We always want to be honest when we show you guys a product, even though uh, it was given to us for free, we don't wanna gloss over any imperfections that we see. But all in all, uh, I'd say I give it about a seven and a half to eight out of 10 on the finish, considering the price point. So now if this was a much more expensive front lift, I would be not expecting to see some scratches and small blemishes, but a lot of these are gonna be hidden. hidden. And let's be honest, this front lip is gonna be down on the ground, getting rock chips thrown at, at it. Um, day in and day out, so it's gonna get chipped up anyway, so really I don't think it's that big of a deal. And the nice thing about a matte black finish, it is gonna absorb a lot of things without showing a lot of those imperfections, whereas if you have a painted lip or a carbon fiber lip, any chips or scratches are gonna be a lot more visible over time. All right, now they do include some fasteners, washers, and self-tapping screws. And they include some 3M, uh, 3W, wait, which is it? It's uh, definitely not 3M tape. So you could use this. I don't know how good it's gonna hold up. Any lip that we get that includes tape, I always use our own 3M brand. Would this work? Probably, um, but I like to try to have to only put something on once. So we're gonna switch this out for 3M tape, but they do include tape, which is always a nice touch. Not all the brands do include tape, so. Um, and they actually have the tape pre-installed on these corner pieces. Again, we're gonna swap this out for 3M tape just because um, we're picky. Um, you don't have to do that. You could just throw it on there and this would be a very quick install, but we're gonna swap out some of this tape and then we'll get this put on the car. All right, so we got the tape they included removed. We're gonna throw some tape on here. Before you do, clean it with some 70% isopropyl alcohol, and we're gonna use the same thing on the front of his bumper. You don't wanna use higher than 70% because this can damage the paint on your vehicle. Um, so let's install some tape, and we have to do a shameless plug. If you go through our links to buy anything, we do get a kickback. Um, so we do appreciate it when you go through our links to purchase products. Um, and we will have a discount code down in the description as well. So let's get some tape thrown on here and then we'll start putting it on the car. Now, one thing with 3M tape, you wanna be very careful not to touch it with your fingers. The oils in your fingers will um, degrade the adhesion very quickly. Um, if you've touched it at all, I would recommend using a new piece. Um, if you're holding anything critical. Now this is gonna have a lot of tape, so if you touch it in a couple spots, it's not really gonna matter, um, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now this is all the tape you need. We've installed a ton of front lips, um, specifically on BMWs usually. And 
you don't really need tape in some of these other areas. Now, on some lips, you do want to put tape in this area because it'll lift away from the body. But when I dry fit this on the car, this hugs the body really nice and it doesn't really want to pull away. If you try to pull it away, it snaps right back in place. On the bottom, it's going to be fastened by screws. Um, so the only place you want to make sure that you get a nice adhesive bond is right in this area. And that's going to tuck it and keep this from lifting up. Um, and then screws will hold it in the bottom. So you don't really want to use more tape than you have to because it does make it uh, difficult to remove in the future if you ever need to. Now before putting the corner pieces on, you're going to want to remove this eight millimeter screw right here because it's going to get reused to hold the piece in. All right. Now before installing a front lip, it's always a good idea to wash any dirt or debris off of here. Otherwise you could scratch your paint while you're installing it um, and then go ahead and wipe it down with 70% isopropyl alcohol to get any residual wax. Um, or sealants that you have on the surface off so you'll get a good bond with the tape. Now what I like to do when I'm installing tape is actually keep most of the backing installed and just pull up a little bit at both ends. And what this is going to allow you to do is get it in place without the tape grabbing and then you can pull the tape back. And it's a good idea to start it from both ends because sometimes it'll rip as you get to the middle and then you'll have another end to work from. So I got this pulled back a little bit here and I'll also sometimes just take scrap pieces of tape I have and put them over the sticky area so that nowhere is touching until I want it to. But in this case, I'm just gonna do it this way with these two little tabs. So we're gonna hold those out. All right. <clears throat> All right, so that's sitting right where I want it to. Now before pulling the tape, I'm gonna put that one bottom screw in to help hold it in position. Okay, you don't want to overdo those bottom screws. It's very easy to break them off or strip out the clips they go into. So now we're going to pull this strip of tape. All right, push it up and good. And then anytime you put tape on, it's good to hold it down for like probably 10 seconds is enough. I usually like to do it for 20 to 30 seconds just to get that little extra press to make sure that initial bond is good. So you can see how this is hugging very nicely. Like I just said, um, this corner is not pulling away at all, even with me lifting against it. So it's gonna stay nice and tight there. So you don't need tape. That's just gonna make the install more challenging. Um, but the fitment here is actually really good compared to some uh, much more expensive lips I've seen around these little cutouts right here. These cutouts are tricky. Um, and this is actually one of the better fitting ones I've seen here. Um, one thing I am noticing is there's a little ripple in the plastic up in that area. Um, again, you're probably gonna be the only one that ever notices it and it is a very cheap front lip, so not a huge deal, but that is something to just note. Um, the other one seems to not have that as much. It's mo mostly on this one. One corner down, let's do the next one. I do have to say I love lips that reuse the factory holes. It makes lining them up much easier and so far these holes line up perfectly. So that is a nice plus. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now sometimes with these BMW belly pan screws, the plastic part that you're screwing into will just push up so you have to kind of gently screw it in and you might need to hold these corner, like triangular pieces down to apply some downward pressure so that the screw can bite into the clip that it's going into. I have to say, once again, I'm really impressed by the fitment over in this corner, especially towards the middle part of the bumper um, right in here. That, that's a very nice tight fit and you don't see that on a lot of, uh, especially carbon fiber because carbon fiber is even the, the highest quality is very hard to uh, get perfect fitment. Um, so you have a little bit more flexibility with plastic to, to get that closer and they did a good job with that. So I had one slight mistake. There's actually two screw holes, one on this very outside edge that I missed, um, but there was enough flex where I was able to pull it down and remove that eight millimeter screw. So that second eight millimeter is right here. So at this point, we have our two corner pieces taped onto the bumpers and we are ready 
to fasten the front lip on, which will also fasten through those corner pieces. Um, and this has made me realize there are some issues with the provided hardware. So they provide uh, some extras, which is always nice, of these self-tapping screws, which are all well and good, except for two problems. One, they're too long for this middle section. This middle section is um, recessed a little bit. So if you were to screw this all the way through, even with the provided washer, I think there's a good chance you might go through the front of your bumper. So we're gonna swap out to some short self-tapping screws that we keep in stock for installing front lips and other hardware. So we're gonna use those in these middle two locations. So that'll take care of that problem. The other two holes in the corners where we remove these two eight millimeter uh, factory screws, these actually go into metal clips on the factory bumper. So if you were to use this hardware, which has a self-tapping head, it would completely destroy those clips and potentially not have anything left to catch onto after it was done ripping through those clips. So these will not work. And unfortunately, you cannot reuse the factory screws that you removed because they're a little bit too short. They won't be able to make it through this front lip, the side piece, and all the way up to that clip. So always hang on to extra nuts and bolts because you never know when they might come in handy. So we happen to have these, which have a similar thread. You can see it's more of just a traditional screw thread rather than a self-tapper. They're a little bit rusted up, but they're still sturdy. Um, so this is the kind of screw that you're gonna wanna use in the corners if you're reusing those OEM clips. And you're gonna kinda have to need to because there's holes in the factory bumper where those clips go. So otherwise you don't have anything to screw into. So we're gonna swap the corners out to four of these style screws and the middle two are gonna be swapped out to slightly shorter self-tappers like this. All right, so we are gonna put a strip of tape in both corners. So just wiping it with the 70% isopropyl again. And we'll use a slightly thicker piece of tape here because there will be some downforce on this. The tape will bend, but you don't want to bend it too extreme. All right. All right. And I'm going to cut this back a little bit because if you're too close to the edge like this piece is, it'll actually create like a visible gap, whereas you want this to look like one piece when it's all put together. All right. Now, but before removing any of the backing, we're just gonna do a dry fit to see if we like how she's looking and to make sure everything's nice and hidden. All right, let me see if the holes are lining up underneath. They are lining up swell. All right, so I have Reese here to help me put this up. This is his car, so he can make sure we're doing it the right way. Now what we're gonna do, since we have longer screws to go in the back, we are going to just get these four back screws started so that we know it's in position. And then we are going to remove the tape. I'm gonna just get these through a little bit. All right. Again, we're just going in these factory holes back here. And try to get it to grab. So we got that, back it out. So we have a little bit of play where we can pull down to get to the tape. Now we're having a tough time getting the screws on this side to catch into those metal fasteners. The holes are just slightly off. So if you over drilled those holes a little bit and kind of went in on an angle, you might be able to catch it a little easier, but we're trying not to do that if we can avoid it. So if you release the three eight millimeters here, there's one here and then two right behind this wheel, you'll be able to get your hand on top of that plastic piece and push down on it and have that force to, um, and have that force applied when you're trying to fasten the screw into it. All right. All right, so if you see now we can pull this uh, wheel liner out a little bit. We can get our hand in here and then press down on this plastic while we screw up into the metal clip that's held by that plastic 
because right now when we're screwing up this plastic underneath is just raising up. You can see how flexible it is and we need to get a screw to bite into that. Okay. All right, so we got all four of these corner screws started. Um, now, initially when we put it up here, it did seem like they were missing on the one side a little bit, but just a couple millimeters, it wasn't a lot. Um, but with getting our hand above this plastic and pushing down, we didn't have any problem getting those started. So I just wanna show you what the metal clips are that we're screwing into. This is what they look like, and this is why the self-tapper wouldn't have worked. It would've just bit in here and spun this um, and ripped it up. Um, so. This will be sitting in and you're putting a screw through here. And this is just fastened into those plastic parts on the car. So if the screw is hitting just slightly off to the edge, it just pushes the whole thing up. So that's why sometimes having a hand on top to press it down um, helps create that pressure and force so that the screw can bite and go in. Just don't make sure, just make sure you're not putting your hand directly where the screw is going so you don't you know, drill into your hand. Now with those screws holding it in place, we know that this is lined up in the correct position so we can go ahead and get the tape started. So I'm gonna take a pick tool under here and just lift that corner of the tape up. Now, I broke the tape uh, cover free before I put it in here because otherwise it's really hard to get it started. And then I just put it back down on top. Just pull that out. Oh, you see how that ripped? That will happen sometimes when you go to pull tape out. So we're gonna have to get in that corner a little better. And that's often why I will start it from two sides um, because like if you're doing this on a trunk lip and you're really pressing down on that trunk lip, it can be a huge pain um, if half of the tape comes out and half of it's still stuck under there, especially for carbon fiber because you don't get a lot of flex like you do with this. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is fully fasten those four screws and then we'll go ahead and screw in the middle. All right, with those two fastened, I am going to press up on this to make sure that tape adheres nicely. And again, you wanna make sure that this is all wiped down with 70% alcohol to make sure you have a good adhesion to it. So now we can go ahead and fasten it in the middle here. Now you don't wanna overdo the tightness with self tappers because at some point you will just strip out the plastic you're going into. So one little update, this is the one they provided again, which we think is just a little bit too long. I attempted to first put it in with this one, but there weren't enough threads getting through to the bumper to catch, so we stepped up to a one inch self-tapper and that worked perfectly. But we're gonna go ahead and put two self-tappers, one up in this front corner, one back here, just to add a little bit more security so that this doesn't get ripped off going down the highway. So we are gonna use theirs here with the washer, so these longer ones will come in handy in these corners. So again, two right here and two on the other side. You can see that's pulling it in nice and tight. And you won't have to worry about this getting ripped off going down the highway. All right, so there it is installed, guys, and I have to say, fitment and installation-wise, 10 out of 10. Installed a ton of front lips here, specifically on BMWs, um, and the fitment on this one is fantastic, and it was very easy to install, um, especially right here in the corner right here. You can just see how it hugs that center part of the bumper, and it's also very nice clean cuts in the corner over here, which even thousand-plus dollar carbon fiber uh, lips don't always get this right and sometimes they look really bad in those corners and in this fitment area right here and this did not have that problem but all those other imperfections that we noticed in the beginning those are all completely covered um, underneath of this so the main area right here there's no imperfections that we can see so yeah um, but I'm gonna let the owner or one of our employees Reese talk a little bit about it because he is a perfectionist um, so um, I'm gonna hand the mic over to him and see how he likes it. All right, so looking at this lip, um, I do like things perfect. Uh, I see that the fitment here is really good. I mean, I've installed some carbon ones and they're never that close to the uh, bumper here. Um, I do see a little bit of the ripples there and a little bit over here. But um, 
Overall, it's pretty good. The paint is a little bit different color here, but I might paint match this to the uh, black sapphire metallic there. So um, overall, it's pretty good. I'd buy it for this price for sure. All right, so that's our installation guide and review for this Nente front lip on this F32 435. Would definitely recommend it for the price. I don't think I'd pay much more for it. I think it's a, a fair price for what you're getting. Again, we will have a discount code down in the description. Um, and anytime you go through our links to purchase, it does help us out. So we really do appreciate that. If you have any comments or questions or would like us to install any products on your BMW, definitely hit us up, shoot us a message, and we'll get back to you. See you back in the next video.